Hi, Mr. Brian, Brian Weir. Weir. Uh, Weir. 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 Mr. Brian Weir, president of Super Shuttle. I'm a Super Shuttle franchisee. I've been told that you're concerned about the well-being of Super Shuttle franchisees. If that's true, how come you've never visited LAX? Isn't LAX Super Shuttle's largest operation in the USA? Since you can't come to us, we decided to bring LAX to you through the courtesy of YouTube. This is our world. This is LAX. This is where we live. 17 hours a day, 7 days a week. Sunshine, rain, our moon, it doesn't really matter. We are cold. That's all for us. Just look at the number of vehicles all around me. Look at these buses. Look at these limousines. Look at these vans. At one time you could have as many as a thousand vehicles here and they all depend on these four portable toilets. These toilets are clean once a day only at about 8 o'clock in the morning. By 9 o'clock they are a total filth. Nobody can use them. Tell me, where is the dignity of labor? What happened to America? I'm going to indulge you to see inside one of these restrooms. So, please bear with me. Now if you can see, this is the condition of this restroom and it's only noon. Let me take you to another restroom now. This is where we eat. This is our lunch and dinner facility. And if you notice, it is right next to a toilet and next to three garbage trunks. This is our lunch truck. We commonly refer to it as a roach coach. This is our competition. This is where taxi drivers eat and rest. And if you see, they have a proper shade here. They have a place to sit. And they have two television to watch. They even have a place to hang their uniforms and so on. These are their restrooms. Let me take you inside their restrooms. See how properly maintained and clean they are. They are properly maintained bathrooms. This was our toilet and now it's been locked. We have been locked out of it. And you know why? Because Super Shuttle does not want to pay for the cleaning. These are not my words. These are the words of LAX authorities. And I'm going to show you their letter on this in a moment. Mr. Weir, now that you've seen where we live, where we eat, the terrible conditions of the bathrooms we use every day, and you've also seen the taxi facilities with clean, shaded areas for rest, clean bathrooms, and happy taxi drivers. What is your justification to subject us to such humiliating life? What have we done to deserve this? You may also be wondering why anyone 
would want to spend 17 hours a day, seven days a week, in the holding lot. Sir, respectfully, I must tell you, we don't have a choice. According to this contract, each one of us owes Super Shuttle $800 to $1,200 when the week begins. We have to work 60 hours each week just to pay Super Shuttle the fees. If we work only 60 hours, we take home absolutely nothing. And when you work 60 hours without pay, you don't want to go home and sleep because you want to make some money for yourself too. Thus, we end up working 100 to 120 hours a week. Many of us even sleep in our vans or live in our vans just to make ends meet. Do you remember Leonard Davis? Excuse me, Dr. Leonard Davis, PhD, LLM, economics advisor to India, church leader, USC professor. He became a super shuttle driver and died in his van. And nobody knew he was missing for over two weeks. His decomposed body was found two weeks later in his van in a Kmart parking lot near Disneyland. Why do you think that nobody noticed he was missing for two weeks? Because he was living in his van. He had become a homeless person. What a shame and tragic end to such an honorable man. Is this what Super Shuttle does to people that work for it? Mr. Weir, this was an honorable profession. Many well-educated people become drivers. I've seen doctors, lawyers, teachers, college professors, engineers, inventors, corporate executives, artists, musicians, to name a few. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw you driving a super shuttle van tomorrow. We used to work five days a week, eight hours a day, and we made good money. We even had clean bathrooms. Then you turned us into franchisees. Now we work 17 hours a day, seven days a week, and we can barely make a living. We don't have medical insurance, we can't get it even if we want it. You won't let us form an association. Each franchisee pays you roughly 80000 per year. Do you think a franchise with 17-hour workdays, dirty, filthy bathrooms, miserable work conditions is worth $80,000 per year? Are your services worth $80,000 per year? You have the power to change things. Do something to restore the dignity of our profession while you have a chance. This is America. You never know when you lose your job and you end up being a driver.